Hi, I'm David Matthews and this is Anti-Social Media. Today, I'm interviewing the man who arguably has taken the most infamous photograph in social media history. From the beginning, how did you meet and get involved with, with Wood? Yeah, uh, I met Wood in 2009 or 10 um, at, at the gym, at a, a, a gold gym in San Francisco, South Market section. And um, it was, uh, at the time, it was sort of like the premier gay gym in San Francisco. It was like where all the gay gays went. So it was, a, it was a pretty intimidating place. You know, everyone was a little too, um, a little too buff, a little too pretty, a little too... <laughs> so, but he was, he was one of the, like a handful of straight guys who worked out there, you know, you know big, you know, um, great big guys. And I honestly don't remember exactly how we met, but at some point we started talking and um, he was just a really friendly, outgoing guy and... You know, I liked him because he would always be like, Big Walt, he called me Big Walt, and he'd give me a big bro handshake, you know, that like slam into me handshake. And I'd be like, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, we just started talking. And then at some point, you know, he found out what I did for a living. And I, I um, at, now I, I own, at the time I simply worked for Pantheon Productions, uh, which uh, is an adult, a gay adult, film production company here. And um, uh, I, so at some point I just asked him if he would be willing to, to take some photos and do a video with me. Um, and he was- Okay, okay, let me, <laughs> let me just stop you there. Okay, because obviously, obviously there's a conceptual sort of like leap from right. like, hey, you know, hey, Walt, Big Walt, how you doing? And like, you know, like working out, like, you know, what you're benching these days to, um, uh, oh, um, by the way, I've got an idea. Like, I mean, how did, how did that just, you know, how did you approach that? God. How did I approach that? Um, I, I'm not really sure how I approached it, frankly. I mean, I, honestly, because it's 10 years ago, I don't really remember. You know, at some point, I just... Um, you know, he's a great, I mean, obviously from the pictures, he, and, you know, he's a, was a great big guy. So, you know, physically he was imposing and, and my, and I should say my site, um, the main site we have, which is Hot Older Male. Um, and I had another site at the time called Pantheon Bear. So he really fit that mold. I mean, we're focused on, on daddies and bears, um, which if you don't, you know, daddies are kind of guys 40 plus more or less. Hmm. Bears tend to be bigger guys, often hairy, though not in his case. Um, you know, and a bear can have a little bit of a belly and a little bit, a little mm. bit of weight on them, and mm. that's that's in you know in, in the gay world. Mm. Um, and there's a whole thing around it, like people are re really attracted to it. So he fit that mold perfectly. And I was also trying to actively get more African American or Black models on the site because at the time we really didn't have that many or really maybe even any um so he kind of fit all all those boxes and um you know he i i don't know that i would have asked just i wouldn't i don't ask strangers in the street or even <laughs> yeah someone, you don't go out to people like yeah you know I, I don't go because yeah. it gets kind of weird but um i mean i know it had to be the fact that he was just so open he was just such an open friendly guy that like when I told him what I did for a living, he didn't he didn't do that like oh. he he was right. like, really oh cool what you know, um, so he was interested and engaged and so you know I asked him and I, I don't even recall if he was uh, hesitant at all, um, right? But once he said yes, I was like bam you know you don't I was like let's do it right now like right away sure you, you know. So you don't want to give anyone a chance to, <laughs> to change, to change their, mind. their mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So a couple of things on that. Do, what, what do you know of his, uh, or what did you know of his kind of like his background or his work at the time? Do you, do you know what he was, what he was up to? What, what, what did he do for a living? Gosh, you know what? I, I don't know that I even, I mean, I, here's, here's the thing. I know now the kinds of things he was doing because I too have been reading the articles about him. Um, 
So I don't know what is memory and what is recent knowledge. So uh, I think I knew that he worked as a bouncer, which is what I, I think I thought he did. Um, I think he, I, I could be wrong about this, but I think he may also have been training some people at the gym, you know, as a trainer. Um, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, so I really didn't know, you know, I knew that he um, had a child, I believe a son. Um, I, uh, I knew that he was no longer with, with the mom and, and I don't know if they were divorced or just were separated. Um, so that's really all I can remember knowing about it, you know, other than his, you know, his personality. Yeah. I, I guess the, 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 the door work is interesting in terms of his personality. Cause you often find that, you know, people who do, um, door work or security and, and even dare I say people who are on the kind of more uh, uh, let's say you know statist end of it who work for the police or whatever people think oh you know they're all like big and butch and authoritarian but actually they intersect and interact with a, a very diverse right. range of people you know more than perhaps the average sort of member of society so in some ways you could see how this guy who it is, you know, big and buff and kind of like intimidating to many people would actually be quite open-minded, I guess. So the other thing that you just said there that, that was really interesting was, um, so you thought, right, I'm getting on this guy straight away. So what was the, the sort of, you know, the time, the duration between making the decision to talk to him, him agreeing, and then it, it all happening? Uh, it would have been literally within a week, I would have done it because, um, you know, I wanted, I wanted to get in front of the cameras. And at the time we had a studio space uh, really near there, like not quite walking distance, it's really close to that gym. So it was easy to just set it up. Um, and I can tell you, I shot it because I, I looked up the contract. I shot him on January 14th of 2010. So I wouldn't be surprised if I had asked him, you know, the week before that. Uh, so, you know, I did, I just, just got him in there and, and we did, we did the photo shoot and uh, I, sh I looked the raw photos. I shot hundreds of photos. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And actually more, I, when I looked uh, at the files, I was like, wow, I shot a lot more of him than I normally would um, uh, because he was that good. Right. And then I shot a solo. He did a solo like jack off video for the camera. Um, and that both of those are still up on my website. Um, and that, that solo video is like 16 minutes long edited, which is super rare because how long can you watch somebody, <laughs> how long can you real for like, yeah. like yeah. You know, it's kind of one thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how long can you even do it for? Since, you know, right. I've been born yourself. <laughs> yeah, not just like, yeah, right. I mean, we, right. you know, as, as men, we know it's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but oh he, was, he, was, he was just really, you know, that, there, that there's that old saying and it's true, you know, the, you know, the camera loves some, the camera loves some people and it, you know, and conversely, it doesn't love some people. And mm. they just, he just had a way of engaging with the camera. And I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons this photo is so, so it's taken off the way it has is yes, he's a great big guy and yes, he's got a great big dick and, um, but it's really more about the intensity in his eyes and his ability to look at that camera, not, un, not self-consciously. Um, and I really, you know, makes you look like you're, he's looking at you mm -hmm. and that image he's got like, a, you know, I'm a boss look like don't mm -hmm. F with me. Um, and it just worked. So yeah. taking pictures of someone like that is like super easy because you don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, you just and do, and do, you, do you know, had he, had he therefore, had he done much of that sort of thing in any kind of context before that, or was he still pretty raw when, when you met him? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he had any experience. Now, I, again, I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, he didn't really have any experience doing anything like this. Um, he took direction great. And I said, like I said, not, you know, I just basically asked him to, to you know, turn certain ways and, um, you know, whether smile, not smile, that kind of thing, but you can't direct someone to engage with the camera in a real way. You just can't do it. Um, they either can't, they, people do it or they can't. And, yeah. um, he could, 
simply. You mentioned a moment um, ago, and uh, I know that we we spoke previously about, uh, of course, getting more African American men involved in what you were doing, but there being a little bit perhaps of uh, um, a concern about the marketability um, of that kind of thing at the time. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, at the time, um, uh, well, like I said, I, I currently own the company, but at the time, the guy who originally founded Pantheon um, was, we were business partners. And I, w I was really pushing to get, bring in more, more or some uh, African-American men. Well, and, and people of other, I mean, in, you know, Latino and, you know, Asian, and other, other uh, races and ethnicities. Uh, because I just felt like, you know, the, it, the name of our site is Hot Older Male. So, I mean, it doesn't say hot older white male. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, I thought, you know, there are, they, there are hot older men of color out there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, oh. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, uh, so, you know, I was really, you know, actively wanting, wanting to do that. And, um, you know, at first, I think there was, there was some resistance just because it, it wasn't what we, what we had done, right? Um, but once we, you know, once we, once we did, you know, I mean, it, was, it became like a no-brainer. I mean, I think way back, you would probably remember this. Remember when, when MTV was going to play black music? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole... And it was like that, yeah. a big deal that they mm. were going to play, you know, put black artists on MTV. Mm. And people were like, that's not rock. That's... And it mm. was, you know... And of course, today, if you tell that, you tell that to younger people, they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It doesn't even register as something you would discuss. But it was a very real issue. Um, and, uh, but, you know, today I have, you know, all, like I said, all sorts of races and ethnicities on there because, you know, that's the name of the site is hot older males. Mm. So, so when you did, when you did the shoot with, uh, uh, with wood, um, and like you say, you took, you know, quite a lot of, uh, of, of shots Would the standard practice have been you know sort of hit and run in the sense that you get someone shoot 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 and then that's it you're not really gonna see them again because he didn't he didn't work with you again after that did he no he didn't work with us again i mean, I mean the answer to your question is, is yes and no you, you it just depends on the guy right i mean i did ask him at the end of the shoot because i was like he was so good i was like would you be willing to do a scene with other guys and it, he was right away. He was like, uh, you could tell he wasn't. He just wasn't comfortable with that. And yeah. you know, that's yeah. Fine. But, like, but there, 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 there's there's uh, and you know, and correct me if if I'm wrong or if there is um, uh, if I'm if what I'm about to say is not uh, you know if it's not unusual to have like a straight guy that want would want to do that kind of work. And then, but then, of course, when you say, "Oh, what about with it?" and they're like, "No, no, no," it's like, "Well, my dude, you're in that mix." In that, not not to say that one should lead to the other, but it's like, it's almost like what took him there in the first place. Unless you know, do you, was there ever a sense that he had a bit of that, you know, dare I say, you know, by curiosity or something like that himself? Um, I don't know if he was if he really had any of that by curiosity. I, I got the sense that he was definitely sexually very open and, and adventurous. Like he was clearly comfortable with his body and his sexuality. Um, and he clearly knew th the attraction or the power that it had with, with men and I'm sure women. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he, it, it was clear he had that level of not confidence and it wasn't arrogance. It was just confidence. Um, but uh, I didn't get the sense that he, was necessarily he had any like I said by curiosity as you said um uh and i think that i i've had we've had i've had a few straight guys through the years to do this do bitch um photos and 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 video and i think you know there's I mean, where else are they? Where else are they going to do it? I mean, there isn't a lot of porn for women. True, yeah. Like that, like yeah. there, there are. I mean, I'm sure some women would enjoy watching this this video of him. I'm sure they're mm. out there. But mm. for the most part, 
you know, there's not there's not a lot of straight porn that's being made of guys just jacking off or guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting, guys getting photos of them taken um, in that in, in a way that celebrates their body. It celebrates, you know, being yeah. men, you know, yeah. uh, it's going to be in the gay porn world that they're going to get approached. So yeah. I think there's a certain element, you know, maybe it's a little bit of ego. You know, maybe mm. it's I, I've always wanted to be have some, you know, really good photos taken of me. Mm, mm. Um, so. I mean, I think it's complex, right? Why yeah. someone might do something like this. Yeah. I mean, in, 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 invariably, one has to um, ask, and, um, uh, and, uh, and of course, you, you know, you're um, uh, obviously at liberty to, to answer uh, or not, as the case may be. But, uh, I mean, how much did he get for it, if you don't mind me asking? Or is that more, or is it confidential? I mean, it is confidential, but I can tell you that it's, it's, couple of hundred bucks you know it's right. not you're not getting <laughs> you know you're, yeah, not, yeah. you're not paying you're not even paying the rent here in san francisco on one day's one day right day. okay and, and he would have been fully aware of, of that i mean why ask about the money is not so much to find out hey i wonder what what's making is you know what what was his thought process because if he's thinking well you know yeah there's not really a lot of money in it but i'll do it because hey it's a bit of fun or whatever then that gives us a bit more of an idea as to what his thought process was like yeah. what sort of person he was yeah, like I can, I can tell you back then i mean actually people people are paid less now because of the, the because of the financial the finances of the porn industry today yeah there's so much I, free stuff yeah, there now yeah, right. it, but back then people on on average you know probably would have been paid five or six hundred dollars for something like that and that would have taken uh you know four or five hours you know, if at max, you know, maybe even three or four hours. So half of your day, five or 600 bucks. Um, but you're right. It certainly was not. I definitely got the sense. No, if you're doing it for the money, you're, you're <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing, you're never going to make enough money um, to live off something like that. Uh, I find most guys, and, and I think this was definitely the case with Wood, do it because it's partly, you know for a lark something they've always wanted to do um i mean i can tell you that i work with a lot of gay guys who since my since i work with older guys who you know maybe are in their 50s and and they're a lawyer or an accountant or they worked in the corporate world and their whole life they're like oh i always wanted to be in a porn but i was afraid to because of my career mm. and now they're like oh you know what i'm 55 i'm gonna retire soon I, i'm at a level no one's gonna care so they do it for because it's sort of like I, I hate to use the term bucket list, but it's like that. Right, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm checking this thing I've always wanted to do in my life, but I, I didn't do it for all these other reasons. Hmm. And um I think that my, there might have been part of that, some of that with wood. Hmm. You know? Why not? What, 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 what do you what do you think of and you know, I'm not trying to get you to kind of like, you know, sort of retrospectively shrink him because like you say, you, you, you know, the, the, the nature of your relationship was very much the gym. And then obviously you, you did the, sh you didn't sort of socialize outside of that or see each other outside of that. But I'm just wondering what do you think he may have made of the, the success, the notoriety, the infamy or whatever of, of, of where that image has gone now. And the state status that he's got, you know, obviously posthumously as a result. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's, I mean, it's, it's really hard to, to, to know what his reaction would be. And um, uh, he might, my guess, and I would hope that, you know, he would, he would see it for what it, what it, what it is and, and be able to be able to laugh about it because it is so, unpredictably strange hmm. at least from my perspective you know and i you know i should point out too that when this all happened i i looked at i looked at the photos you know and i hadn't looked at these photos in years i mean they're you know there's no reason to and then this started happening so i looked at the original photos and i can tell you while he is big <laughs> down below that image was, has clearly been photoshopped by somebody at some point like that is not an accurate representation right. so it, yeah so in some ways it's not even really i mean it is him but it's not him too right? mm. 
you know? And, 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 and okay, so it's, <laughs> let's get into a disproportionalities or, you know, like measure. Yeah. I mean, how, how much bigger would you say it is compared with what it really was? Well, I mean, I could probably screen share you the, the original image here so you could see it. Um, uh, well, of course, I've seen various versions of it, right? Like, uh, of, so, but um, I mean, I think on, you know, when I asked him, I think on the, on the sheet, he said he was, he was a nine, nine inches, which is really big. Mm. Um, but that thing, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. a, you know I, I don't know what that would be. It, you yeah. Know. I mean, it's well, like a, like, well, to put it in an American, it's like what the Louis Louisville Slugger or something. I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's so, humongous. Yeah, so um, you know, in some ways, I would hope you would look at that and think, you know, it's, it's not even really me. But mm -hmm. honestly, if you were alive, I would hope he would be like, oh, I'm gonna that he would leverage it and and get mm. some, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah some retire you know, on it yeah 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 or get some you know uh get some uh advertising work out of it I yeah know. yeah because I, I did uh i think i mentioned this uh to you the other day i mean when i first sort of uh well not when i first came up, uh, across it but when i first became aware um of you know the the sheer uh the, you know, the enormity oh my god got it this is, I'm going to go into pun central now, but you yeah. know, the, the sheer enormity of the, phen of, of the phenomenon. Um, I thought to myself, well, you know, this is, uh, this, the, you know, this is clearly something that has kind of like shifted into, or is pushing against kind of like ma mainstream culture in the sense that it's been shared so many times in so many different, guises i mean some of it is of course you know very crass and a bit sort of like cheap some of it i find you know is uh, is just hilarious given it's been taken out of context and then you know there's a minority of images or context that it's been used in where you just think wow these people you know you should be working for nasa or something because the, the imagination and the creativity that's gone into it is so deep however um, there are many people, of course, and, and I, I say this from a, a personal perspective, people, you know, kind of close to me who have known that I have uh, paid an interest in this and even, you know, shared it, you know, the image in various forms with friends who, um, who have said, you know, like, don't you think that you're perpetuating a kind of racial stereotype here? And I say, well, hang on a minute, well, well, why? You know, like, what, black guys aren't allowed to take their clothes off and make money as a result of that, I mean, uh, I don't, I, have you had much thought about about that and about the complexities of the sort of you know the politics of such an image? The philosophy that started with my the previous uh, business partner um, that I carry through today is that we're um, sorry, yeah. right. we're celebrating older men mm. because and, and I do want to get into this just a little bit because I think it's I think it's is, is relevant. Um, the reason we were in this niche and the reason that this was started was because we saw and felt like there really was, there was, there were no older men in, in the gay porn world mm. at the time when this was started in 2003, like you saw everyone was on, everyone was under 30 and, you know, uh, super buff and hairless. And, you know, we didn't, we just didn't feel like it, they were celebrated. And so when we started this, when we worked, created this, we wanted to make sure that we, that we, that's what we were doing. We were celebrating older gay men, mm. or not even older gay men, but older men. And that meant that there might be some weight on them. There's going to be some hair, there's going to be some wrinkles, and we're not going to try and hide that, mm. right? So I think the same thing applies here. It's like, you know, we, we're trying to celebrate uh, the beauty of, in this case, Wood, and he happens to be black, and mm. there is beauty in that. Yeah, and there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong in saying, "Look, this is beautiful. Let's look at it. Let's appreciate mm -hmm. it." Um, and we all, and we are all, um, would us, the, the viewers, we're supposed to be. Well, we're all adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, at least in the in the context of of the porn world, mm -hmm. and we're choosing to do these things. So it's, yeah. 
Um, that's why I don't, I don't see it as problematic. And when you, now to get into your point about the racial stereotypes, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you that I, like, I personally, my boyfriend is black. And um, so when, and I've had people say to me, oh, is that, you know, are you fetishizing that? I'm like, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I'm a, this is who I'm attracted to. Mm. And it's not simply for his, the color of his skin. There's a whole lot of things that go into that. But yeah, is that part of it? Yes, absolutely. That is part of my attraction. I, I don't know what that, I, I don't think that that's racist or that I'm fetishizing him, but mm. I, I think it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, 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 it's very complicated. Uh, and obviously, uh, uh, you know, and hats off to you, you know, it's, it's a difficult question to, uh, uh, to try to condense into, yeah, you I know, uh, uh, um, an easily sort of like, you know. Right. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, the short uh, answer I'm is. struggling, but, it, but you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, you know, because you're drawing on so much sociology, history, you know, uh, you know. All, all, you know, all manner, of, you know, all manner of the media, you know, framing, all of this kind of like stuff, and and I have found myself, you know, constantly up against it uh, um, in not just with this, but in in other situations where, you know, I like to feel that I've got the freedom, uh, uh, and that those of us who, you know, in your own way, I'm sure you would feel the same that when you work in something like a form of media and communication, you want to express yourself and censorship and people getting down on you about what you're doing can be a bit like, well, you know, just like yeah. leave it to us to have the integrity or, you know, yeah. trust us that we actually know what we're doing. Now, when if people choose to take something out of context, right. then yeah, you know, then it, it, it does become, it does become a, a, a sort of free for all perhaps. But on that, I mean, uh, and again, something that we were talking about the, the other day, because you, see, you, you said uh, um, something that I can, I suppose, generationally uh, uh, appreciate that a lot of this, you don't quite get in terms of the, you know, what's funny about it or what's, you know, what's, yeah. what's the intrigue here. Absolutely. I don't, I mean, for, on a personal level, I don't, I don't really understand you know, I don't understand half the memes that are out there. Like, I, I think I was telling you that a few years ago, I was dating somebody who was, who was much younger than, than I was, but it was problematic in a lot of ways. But one of the reason, things that was really difficult is I would send them a text like, hey, you want to come over later? And I'd get like a meme back. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't yeah. know if you're saying, awesome, I'll be there, you know, in an hour or, yeah. you know, F off. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I, <laughs> I could not figure it yeah. out half the time. And um, it was really telling that, you know, to him, it was very clear communication. And to me, it made no sense. Yeah. And, um, uh, and so there's a lot of that with, with this. And, um, you know, some of, like you said, some of the images with wood, I, I think, wow, this is super creative. And I think I mentioned that the, there was the latte creamer that was pouring in his, I'm like, that was awesome. <laughs> that, that, is awesome. I, that is a personal favorite of mine. Yeah, I gotta say, that's I, quite I clever. Great, you know, um, you know, some of the other ones are like, eh, okay, you know, um, but I don't fully understand how this kind of thing yeah. explodes the way it does, and mm. how people. Uh, I, and I suppose if I could figure it out, like anyone, I, you know, I, you know, I. I make myself rich <laughs> yeah. teaching other people how to figure it out because yeah. I, it has a life of its own, right? So I must explain. We've had this um, a guy. Uh, uh, um, I think he was uh, uh, a captain or a major general or something called Tom Moore, who's ninety nine years of age, okay. and he has been. He's raised like over twenty million pounds now, walking up and down in his garden with like a, a sort of Zimmer frame. Okay. And, um, you know, this guy has been, you know, he's like a legend now. Right. Uh, but of course, it being uh, uh, the UK, you know, it doesn't take long for people to start thinking, well, you know, yeah, you're raising all of that money and you're a hero. But there's an opportunity to take the piss here. So, of course, the first one that I got yesterday was uh, wood superimposed on this uh, Zimmer frame. And it's like Tom Morris pushing 
<laughs> yeah. Along that, oh, come on. And then um, one came after that, which I thought was quite funny, was uh, Donald Trump's head superimposed on Walt's body. And then, um, and his member reduced greatly in size, I mean, <laughs> the microscopic level. And oh, then the body given an orange kind of sheen. Right. And I thought, like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was quite, it was quite funny in its own. And then, and then, of course, there was one that because occasionally they crop up in 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 moving images, of course. Yeah. And there was one with a couple of preachers, and it's it, and I won't go any further than that. But it was like, whoa, right. So there seems to be this, you know, endless appetite for playing around with it. And I wonder, do you, do you think? You, yeah, have you thought to myself? Yeah, you know, sorry, have you thought to yourself? Oh, when will this end? You know, like, uh, or yeah, just happy for it to chug along and yeah. you know, in this other space, right. Um, have I thought to myself, when will this end? Yeah, I have. I mean, but not really. Um, I mean, honestly, I thought, I, as you know, this a few weeks ago, when this first person, person came to my attention, you know, I was, re some media reached out to me. I did some interviews, you know, I, you know, the, the family I know was talked to. And I really kind of thought that was the end of it. From that perspective, I, I, yeah, but I mean, it's really, honestly, it's not really that onerous for me. It's, it's kind of interesting to talk to other people about, especially talking to about the, like the cultural aspects of it that we're talking about. Um, you know, I do, from a, from a broader perspective, like if I didn't know Wood and I hadn't taken the picture, I would, I would probably be seeing these things like, oh, you know, it's harmless fun. They're not really making fun of him. You know, it's it's funny, it's cute, it's, people are being really clever. But when you know the person, you know, you begin to think, and I begin to think, what if that were me? I could see if it, you know, if it were me and this was happening all the time and you were seeing these, these never-ending memes, it, that it could get frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's not often that I find myself in a, in a situation where I'm talking about something that, and I really, interested in it engaged in someone's perspective on it that you know on a kind of day-to-day -day, everyday sort of measure you think like what really um because you know a lot of the stuff i'm not, I'm not sure if i mentioned it to you the the, the other day of course I, I sent you the link to some of the work that i've that i've done a lot of the stuff that i tend to do um is um you know a lot of it you could say is kind of like culturally or subculturally quite heavy in right. the sense that if it's to do with, you know, crime or politics or sex or something, you know, bum, 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 and you're going in deep and, and people will assume, well, naturally, there's an area of intrigue and interrogation that requires a lot of, uh, you know, rigorous um, examination. Um, but to, to, but to, to have the same level of interest and uh, desire for knowledge and understanding about what some people would just say, well, it's just a dick. Well, it's not, you know. Um, I'm, I think I said to you jokingly the other day that this is like the Charlie bit my finger of kind of, of pornography, you know, or big dicks in the sense that, you know, for something to have blown up so big right. and to have so much attention, and this is one of the reasons why Alex and I are doing um, this work is that you know radio television uh book publishing uh you know the movies any kind of form of serious media has uh, associated with it a serious level of critique um and and it's beyond academic sort of research as it is at the moment i think with social media is yeah a bunch of academics are kind of interested sort of it in it, but it hasn't really garnered, I think, the attention of uh, people like ourselves to discuss it and critique it in a serious way. And so Alberto Cordo, who took the, uh, uh, you know, the iconic photograph of Che Guevara, which has graced everything from, you know, mouse mats to T-shirts to beer mugs to whatever. What do you think, though? And I know that, you know, for the benefit of our, you know, viewers, if you like, because you mentioned this to me the other day that when it comes to um you know where this goes in terms of 
the legacy of it and 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 by legacy um i mean uh, uh financial more than um you know cultural uh i know you've said that it's not something that you know you're not interested in it, but you have got an interest in in seeing the family try to maybe get something out of this i mean if you could just say a little bit on yeah. that to wrap us up that'd be great yeah well what, i mean what i what i said initially when when this all started it, what i when i because i i was unaware that that um there were some people out there making now there's some t-shirts apparently and you know i think there's actually some masks you know and oh, right. other things yeah um now i i haven't really you know i i don't know where they all are and i, I was asked by um it was tmz actually who said you know are you going to go after these people and, you know and i was like i don't i mean i like i don't like to grasp at pennies or I don't know what with the grasp at shillings. I don't know <laughs> what the yeah. cultural <laughs> equivalent yeah. would be. Yeah. Um, the rate we're going, it'll be rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Soon um, out, because you know, someone's making a t-shirt. So, you know, it's like, I, I'm just, it's not worth it to me. But what I, what I said and what I, what I stand by is that, um, you know, if people, if people are using the image illegally, like they didn't come to me and, and, you know, get permission to use the image and they're making money off of it i would i would hope that they what they would do is reach out to family i know there's a there's a gofundme page for his funeral and they're still, still trying to get a headstone as far as i know um so i would hope that they would give some of that some of those profits mm. to the, to that mm -hmm. um, because it's not I, i'm i'm just not gonna like i said i'm just not gonna grasp for pennies um and that being said i have had people reach out to me to legally license the image and, and you know as the owner of the image i reserve the right to do that and i you know i've talked to some people and there's there's actually going to be a puzzle coming out um i don't know exactly when but i what, like, like a I, jigsaw puzzle yeah like a jigsaw puzzle which wow. I think is going to be like a like a r-rated and an x-rated version um uh, and the same thing there you know i'm i'm, I'm taking some compensation because i own the image but i also ask them to donate to the same fund as well um so that's that's the, the tack I'm, I'm taking on it you know you know obviously if i don't know a major motion picture used it illegally i would be like all right this is beyond the pale mm. um you know like most things it's it's not a black and white answer it's complicated mm. um i am in business you know it's not like sure. i don't like give away my content um mm. and and survive so yeah because Tom, Tom, Tom Segura, the comedian, got into a fundraiser, has got a fundraiser going yeah. uh, on that. Although, I mean, I did think at first, possibly cynically, that it was a kind of publicity sort of stunt, but it, it seems genuinely, genuine enough in that the money that he raises will go to the family. Uh, um, you don't really have anything to do with with the family yeah, they, yeah. they've never no, contacted I, you or yeah i don't i don't know the family at all i've never you know i've never engaged with them at all um i did have a few exchange a few messages with um the woman on his gofundme page who i believe was i believe was his girlfriend at the time of his death um just to reach out and say hey this is you know people are people are you know reporters are talking to me and i've i've referred them you know you know i've suggested they talk to the family um are you okay with that and she was like you know we yeah we'd be they were grateful for any any donations that might come out of it um so beyond that i've had i have no connection to the family whatsoever um and you know and i hope that some of this is coming there you know coming is is able to help out in that way um if you, I mean, my sense of humor is super quirky, and I, you know, I, I'll say or do or have image, see images of things that I think are hilarious, and you know, get that like crickets chirping response from my friends, like, what? Mm. like how that, how, what, you're so weird. Why is that funny? And and this and vice versa, they'll think something is funny that I'm like, what? I'm like, that's so for something like this to somehow build up, like, get this snowball effect, and and get enough people to to suddenly all agree it has some you know it's funny or it's it's moving whatever it is is 
is just what is wild because we all have such diverse senses of what's funny mm. and so for us to for the for people around the world to like mutually agree on this one thing is kind mm. of is kind of is is really confounding to me yeah yeah really confounding how, yeah what happens and why this and not another image mm, mm. but but likewise and I, I you know i have to say in uh, drawing things to to a close that i feel you know an immense amount of privilege being able to talk to you about it because it's uh, you know for the for the business that i'm in you know the, the alex and i what this sort of thing that we do but the, but likewise for what you do you know we're we're not uh, uh, we're not in this to create things that are just seen by you know someone in the room next door. You know we are about putting things out there to as many people uh, as we possibly can. And yeah, sometimes they take a slightly different sort of like path. But I think that uh, you know I have um, I have nothing but respect for you for being the guy who made that thing happen so thank you thank you very much on that on that you might think otherwise I yeah well thank you for that i appreciate it i don't really i really don't feel like i had much to do with it other than taking this one picture all those years ago like, to mm. me you know what's happened after that has has had nothing to do with me whatsoever but you know um it'll it'll be fascinating if i if i, I haven't yet received this from any of my nieces or nephews but you know i'm waiting <laughs> I'm right, waiting yeah. for the time yeah, yeah, yeah. to tell them. Your yeah. uncle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah well, you know, they'll come this, point, wait, you know. they'll, they'll be like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, they, they, I wish, I wish, they won't, <laughs> you know. They'll, no, um, yeah. they'll give me grief about it, but that's all right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Walt, thank you very much yeah. for taking time out to talk about this. I mean, it's been a real pleasure, it's like I say. Right. Great. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully our paths will cross again in the future. Yeah, good luck with everything. Stay safe and all that jazz. And um, Likewise. Take care. Take care now. Thank See you. you. Bye. Bye, Alex. I'm David Matthews, and that was Anti-Social Media. Now you know what to do. Click, subscribe, like. Be safe. <laughs>